In this video, I've got a project just in time for Thanksgiving. It's a perfect, simple project to do on your CNC with your kids. So on this project, I'm using Vectrix VCarve Pro, but keep in mind, you can use any of the Vectric programs from Cut2D to VCarve Desktop all the way up to Aspire. There's nothing I'm doing in this project that is specific to uh, VCarve Pro, okay? And the DXF file that we're including in this project can probably be used in any CAM program that you use with your uh, CNC machine. So first thing we want to do here is create a new file. Now the file size for this, I'm going to make 14 inches by 14 inches. And the material, I measured my material and it measures out at 0.238 inches. So this is where it's really handy to have a pair of digital, digital calipers. And if you don't have a pair, you can get them really inexpensively on Amazon or even like if there's a Harbor Freight near you, you could pick up a pair. They're not going to be the best quality, but they'll be good enough for most CNC projects that you're going to do, especially if it's with wood and, you know, plastics and things. So I'm going to Z0 off my material surface. So that's where I'm going to set my tool length sensor and uh, my zero, my, uh, my end mill. And my XY datum for this job, I'm going to leave in the lower left-hand corner. So this is where I'm going to move my end mill when I start the project if this was my work material. So I'm going to click OK. Now I'm giving you the DXF file and the .crv file for this so you have the Vectric file as well as the DXF. Now I'm going to show you in this video what to do with the DXF file because that's going to be the most universally um, you know, accepted if you're using Fusion 360 or uh, you know some proprietary uh, CAM software with your CNC, then the DXF will be the file you'll want to use. So to bring that in, we're going to go to the file menu and go to import and then import vectors. And we're going to open up the turkey napkin holder DXF. Okay, so here's here's the DXF file. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do, like I did, was measure with your calipers the thickness of your material. All right, And why that's important is this is essentially a puzzle piece. So you've got, this is the back, and you've got this span right here that has to fit into this span. And right in this part here, this would be the thickness of the material. So in my particular application, I am looking at the, I've got roughly 2.4, and I'm, I'm at 2.38 is my material thickness. So that gives me a couple thousands of play to uh, ensure that the puzzle pieces fit together snugly, but not so much that I have to take a file or a sander later to, to fix it. So that piece interlocks in the back. This is the front part, or the I guess the chest of the, um, of the turkey. And these two posts here go into these holes. And then this part on the head and neck actually goes into here. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to measure your material. Okay, so this file that I've, I've generated is uh, 4.238 uh, inches. So the first thing you'll need to do is measure your material. Now, just because you have material that's a quarter of an inch and they say it's a quarter of an inch, you always want to measure it because... I've, I've rarely found wood that measures out exactly what they specify that it is. And when you're doing a puzzle, it's important to keep it as accurate as possible. Now, fortunately, we have a scale calculator that's available for free on our website. So if you go to stepcraft.us forward slash scale, you'll come up with this scale calculator. Now, how this is going to work is you put in your original material thickness. So in this case, it's uh, 0.238 inches and your desired material thickness. So this is when you measure your material, this is gonna be the number that you measure. So let's just say it's uh, 0.252, okay? So it's a little over a quarter of an inch. Then you hit calculate, and it's telling you that the scale percentage to adjust your design is 105.88. So we're gonna go ahead and copy that, uh, which is control C. And now we're gonna go back to the project here, uh, what you're going to want to do is highlight everything, go over to under transform objects, the second one uh, button from the left is set selected object size, 
you want to make sure link XY is checked. And right now it says 100%. You're just going to go ahead and control V and paste in that 105.88 and then click apply. Now you'll notice as soon as you click apply, the project scaled up slightly larger. And now what happens is the, um, the, the gaps here and the width of this slot and the width of these slots are all going to match now your, your 0.252 dimension. So the entire thing scaled up slightly. Now keep in mind, this is a napkin holder. So, you know, it's scaled to roughly a quarter of an inch. If you want to do this out of half inch material, understand that this thing will be huge and it'll be more of a plate holder than a, than a napkin holder at that point. Uh, so the, it's really designed right around the quarter inch material mark. If you go to say eighth of an inch, it's going to be really small and it may only be good for cocktail napkins, but not necessarily for, you know, a normal size table napkin. So I would try to pick material that's close to the quarter inch mark if we're going to go ahead and make this. Now, that's really it. I, I mean, I did everything for you in this file. It's, it's all been designed. The, all the vectors are closed. Everything is good. So the only thing we really got to concentrate now that you brought this in and you scaled it is, is the tool pass. So I have these arcs here that I made. And the reason I did that is I was going to run an engraving bit uh, around those. And I was also going to run an engraving bit on this part of the neck. And the purpose of the engraving bit was that there was going to be three different colors. So there'd be a color here, color in the middle, and then a color here. And the engraving bit would kind of give me a line to go by. Uh, I found that it works okay on the, on the back part here, but because this isn't a two-sided job, you would only have an engraving on one part of the neck and not the other side. So if you wanted to make it a two-sided job or you wanted to cut this part out two-sided, then you can actually engrave that uh, neckline on you know, both sides. So I'm not gonna include that when I engrave this, but I am gonna include these lines here. So the first thing we wanna do is select those, go over to Profile Toolpath. We wanna select a engraving bit. Now. I'm going to select a V-bit that's 90 degree half inch. Now, the reason I'm going to do this with that V-bit is this is actually a bit that you could find at most big box stores like a Home Depot or a Lowe's. Uh, a 90 degree half inch V-bit is very, very common. It'll have a quarter inch shank on it. You're looking at about 15 bucks to buy one. So I don't want to show you an engraving bit that you can't get easily for this particular project. Now, as far as your speeds and feeds and everything, you're gonna have to set this up according to your machine. So this was done on a Stepcraft uh, D840 machine, which you know is a is is a really strong machine, but it would go on the non-production scale of, uh, of 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 machines in terms of feeds and speeds. So, for instance, if I was running this on a Q machine, I might. Uh, my speeds and feeds would probably be uh, three, four times as much as this. But these are the speeds and feeds that work on that particular machine that work well. So just adjust them accordingly to your machine. All right, so we're going to select that tool. Now, we want to, we only want to go down a little bit. It's just to make a fine line. So we're only going to go down, let's just say um, 25,000, so 025. And we want to machine on the vector. So I don't want a machine on either side. I just want to make a line where those lines are. So we're just going to select on. Climbing conventional doesn't matter for this application. We don't need a last pass or tabs. And we don't, uh, we could add a ramp just so it goes in. But at 25,000, your ramp is, it's, it's not going to make that much of a difference. So we can eliminate that. And let's just call this line engrave. All right, calculate that. So now uh, let's change the material color to a wood. Uh, let's just do cherry. And uh, we'll go ahead and preview that selected tool path. And now you can see we just have those lines. Okay. Now the next thing we need to do is the uh, profiles. And the nice thing with Vetric is if you select, like for instance, on this part, right, you would have a a tool path that you would have to cut inside the line and a tool path that you would have to cut outside the line because your finish size is what's inside these vectors and your finish size here is what's outside the vector. So the vector itself is the finish size, okay? 
So one thing that's nice in Vetric, you can highlight everything and it knows the difference that this is an internal part and this is external. So it'll automatically set this to be an inside vector and this an outside vector. So the easiest thing to do is just highlight everything here and then hold the shift key and deselect these arcs because we already engraved them so we don't need them. And I'm going to go ahead and deselect this part of the neck here uh, because I don't otherwise the end mill is going to come through and cut the head basically in half. So we're going to go over to profile toolpath again. This time I'm going to do this with an eighth inch end mill. So just a standard eighth inch end mill. Again, feeds and speeds will be according to your machine and your your machine's capabilities. I'm just going to use a generic uh, eighth inch end mill for this particular project. Click select. Now the cut depth on this, my material is 0.238 inches. If your material was, I, actually I think we, we did, we scaled this one up to, I have 0.23 set in the job, but we did scale it up to 0.252. So we're going to go ahead and leave this at uh, 0.252, which is what we scaled it to. Now if you do that, as long as the bed on your machine or your spoil board is perfectly level, you're going to break through the bottom of the uh, material and, and you're going to be fine. But depending on what type of material you're using, especially if you're using like a plywood material, I always recommend going at least 10 thousandths deeper than the actual uh, material thickness. And the reason for that is if you're using plywood and you only go down to the material thickness, it's possible you're going to get splintering on the backside. Or if your bed is not 100% level, it's possible there's going to be parts of the project that it won't be cut all the way. It'll be like a paper thin layer of wood that, that wasn't cut. And that's going to mean you're going to have to do some, some post work with a sanding and a file to fix it. So we want to eliminate that possibility. So all we're going to do here is add 10 thousandths to this. So instead of 252, we're going to do 262 as our cut depth. Now on this, we want to uh, select outside for the vectors. And remember, Vetric will, will know the difference of what's inside and what's outside, but we want to make sure we select outside here. We do not need a separate last pass for this. Tabs are up to you. Now I'm going to put two inch double side tape across this. So I'm most likely going to have a strip here, probably a strip here, and then another strip right here. And that means when I'm done, all of my parts will be uh, held into place by the tape. So I'm not going to use tabs. It just saves me from having to do uh, any extra uh, sanding work to get the tabs off. So I'm going to just delete those lines. Uh, but you can do tabs if you want. And to do tabs, it's pretty simple. Just click add tabs to toolpath. Uh, I would set now because your material thickness is roughly a quarter inch, I would maybe do 0.1 inches for the thickness and uh, keep the length at about a quarter inch. And I would do a 3D tab. Now, the reason we use a 3D tab is it keeps the end mill moving constantly in, in one direction. If you're using a non-3D tab, which is a square, the end mill is going to come to a spot, lift up, go across, and then plunge straight back down. It's a good habit to get into using 3D tabs if you can, because that means as you come up to the tab, the end mill is good. The Z axis is going to lift up. And then as you go down in, into the material, you're ramping back in. It's a lot less load on the end mill and on the uh, spindle itself. So we're going to use 3D tabs and we click edit tabs. Oh, we have to select a vector. Now, let me just show you as an example. Um, we'll do this, this part here. We'll put tabs on it. So what I want to do here is I want to make sure that I put tabs in a spot where they're easy for me to sand off after. So in other words, I don't want to put a tab right here because it's in the corner and that's going to be kind of difficult. And I certainly don't want to put a tab here or here because again, it's going to be a little more difficult to sand them off. Now, because there's an outside edge, my preference is always to put tabs on a flat area just because it's easier like with a belt or a disc sander to just quickly sand the tabs off. In this particular case, uh, I'm, I'm going to opt to put a tab here and here and then another one here and here. If you do tabs, it's, it's important that you, you try to put them evenly on your model. So if I just did two on the top, then when my end mill starts to cut down here, this material as it breaks free is going to start to vibrate because I don't have a tab 
holding it free in place. Um, so I want to make sure that I have uh, tabs that are you know, relatively evenly spaced. And that's really it. Then you click close. Now, when you, when you do your toolpath on this, uh, let me process this one. And uh, you'll see here that you now have the tabs in place. And if we flip it over and look at the back side, you'll see that the material is held in by those four tabs. So you would simply cut those off with like the end of a chisel and then sand it down and you would be good to go if you wanted to use tabs. Now again, I'm going to use uh, double side tape, so I don't need tabs, so I'm just going to uncheck that. I am going to use a ramp. Now, again, you'll hear me on all of my videos uh, where I basically use a ramp on everything except for when I'm milling out a small hole. And the purpose of the ramp is just to make sure that the end mill goes in at an angle instead of plunging straight down. That's An end mill is not a drill bit. It's meant to be cut laterally as opposed to vertically, at least most end mills. Now, there are end mills that you can plunge vertically with no problem, but that's a different video completely. For this particular one, I'm going to add a ramp, and I don't need a long ramp on this, so I like to use a zigzag, uh, or I can use a smooth, but I, the zigzag is, is preferred. If I'm doing a round object, I'll use a spiral, but on, on a zigzag, I'm just going to set the distance to uh, about a half inch long. So that means that, just to uh, quickly explain, if this is the side, if you're looking at the side of your material, Instead of your end mill uh, plunging straight down like this in, into the material, what's going to happen is it's going to actually plunge into the material at an angle like this, which is what you want. Uh, and that, that's going to just take a lot less load and stress off the end mill and your machine when you enter in at an angle. And this distance from here to here will be a half inch that that's going to happen. Now, if you're using a bigger diameter bit and you're doing a, you know, larger project, thicker material, I, you know, you could go an inch, two inches on the ramp and just make it, or you can even choose the angle that you want to enter in at. Okay. So we got a half inch ramp and that's it. So now I'm just going to do, um, let's just call this cutout and calculate. Oh, I can't calculate it. I have to select the vectors. Um, so what we're going to do again is just we're going to select everything and then deselect these arcs and this piece on the neck. Click calculate. Um, okay, we're going to go ahead and click reset preview and then preview all tool pass. Now what you see is each of the parts are cut here. If I double click on this waste material, it goes away and all I'm left with are the finished parts. Okay. So again, then the, this here, this front piece is going to go into the vertical post will go into here. The neck will go into this slot and then this piece here will go into the back. Now it should be a relatively snug fit. If it's not, you know, that might mean some tolerance issues on your machine. So what you could do is uh, just use some, some uh, super glue or hot glue or something to hold it together. And really that's all you need to do. Now you take this file out to your CNC, cut it. Sit down with your kids and enjoy painting a turkey and uh, have that displayed on your table this Thanksgiving for dinner. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please uh, hit the like button below. And if you're not already subscribed to this channel, please do so. That way you're notified as soon as we publish any new videos. Thank you very much for watching.